Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Byers, and some of you may know me as one of the hosts of the film podcast, The Shameless Picture Show. When I'm not doing that, I do tend to dabble in a little bit of filmmaking. As many may know, to create anything is difficult, and it's just as difficult to make a living trying to be a creative of any sort. Uh, when you're, Whether you're directing, editing, writing, shooting, or working as a gaffer, there's only so much work to go around. Wisconsin, while filled with some truly creative and hardworking people, is not the film state many feel it has the potential to be. And a big part of that is because Wisconsin currently has no tax incentives to entice people to bring their projects to our mighty state. Today, I'm joined by a phenomenal panel to help enlighten everyone about what film, in, what film tax incentives are uh, and what they can do for our state. So today, I am joined by Melissa Masante, John Klein and Jeff Ohm. So let's start with you, Melissa, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Melissa Musanti, and uh, I had been an independent filmmaker. I haven't made a film in a while, uh, primarily because I got a kid and it's just time to raise that kid, and I'll get back to it. Um, but I was part of Film Wisconsin, um, which was the organization that was a public private partnership to bring incentives to the state of Wisconsin. Uh, in the mid 2000s. So about 2005, 2006, 2007. Uh, and we had them briefly, and then we lost them. And so I can kind of talk about how that happened. All right, then let's go on to you, John. I'm John Klein. I'm a cinematographer. I grew up here in Wisconsin. I uh, started uh, MKE Production Rental, where I am right now here in Milwaukee, renting cameras, lenses, lights, supporting uh, video production, uh, film production here in, uh, in Wisconsin in 2013. And uh, more recently, in the last five years or so, I moved to Illinois, just over the border, um, in part because Illinois does have film tax incentives, so it creates more opportunity for me. And then finally, Jeff Olm. Hi, I'm a Wisconsin native and just moved back to Wisconsin three years ago after 35 years in Los Angeles, Nashville, and Orlando. And um, it's great back. Uh, over the past three years, I've worked on probably four local productions, and I continue to do um, national commercials and uh, international films, and am active today. All right. So as, as everyone can hear, we do have a quite, a, we have quite a knowledgeable group of people. So I guess the logical place to begin, and I feel like this might be a good question for Melissa, but please everyone feel free to chime in if you have something to add. Let's start down to the nitty gritty. What are film tax incentives and why are they important? So tax incentive basically provides a break on how much the production will pay the state for taxes um, based on how much they spend in the state. And so it's kind of like, you spend this much and we'll give you some of it back. That's, that's the bottom line. They work differently in every state. Um, there have been some models that really haven't worked um, and you've kind of seen those go by the wayside. But pretty much if you're gonna shoot somewhere, that place is gonna have tax incentives, including uh, for the longest time, uh, California didn't have tax incentives until really? like everybody else had tax incentives and California kind of said, ah, oh, we need to you know, jump on the bus here. Um, so that's the, the short version. Uh, I would love to hear what Illinois is doing um, because I know they made some changes to their program and, and really made it more successful uh, because of those changes. My experience with uh, tax incentives is generally they're when they're funded, when they're paid for, they're based on the total spend in the state. Um, and the logic being, if you spend a dollar, say, on a hotel room in the state you're working in, that dollar is then also spent in the state by the hotel owner to provide the services on the labor, and then that person spends that dollar. Um, so the impact that a film production can have is pretty big. Um, and I think just as a piece of background for like why some states started offering film tax incentives, when there is no baseline production, there's like, there's no risk, right? Like the total tax base right now in Wisconsin for film production is so small that like offering people money, if they 
if they bring money is very easy. Like there's no risk that like a large, there's no risk that what you're gonna end up doing is, is creating a carve out for people that are already spending money here. Interesting. And then uh, Jeff, do you have anything to, to add to those, uh, those definitions? Yeah, I got a lot. I have a lot to add. I've actually a film nomad where um, I've worked in New Mexico for um, three months. I've been to Connecticut twice for two, I'll call them deployments of um, uh, doing dailies and, and things like that. Um, and basically um, I needed to be on that location so the production could get the tax incentives. And, um, and now uh, there's been a great transition that um, with uh, the more, because of COVID, working remote that um, we can, uh, people from all over the world can work on productions, but the tax incentives are still a primary concern. So if you, if, like Lord of the Rings, if you're gonna work on Lord of the, or not Lord of the Rings, let's say Avatar, let me be more current now, but it's the same thing. The, um, everybody that's working on Avatar either needs to be in New Zealand, California, or British Columbia, as far as, as on the post side of it. So I couldn't work on that, even though I've worked on past Jim Cameron projects and things like that, unless I was located in an area like that. But there's great opportunities. It's done well for New Mexico. It's done very well for um, Georgia. Um, is is really one of the big success stories of all of it. And of course, there's you know five Chicago shows, Medical Fire, and all that stuff. Um, plus, Chicago has always been a great advertising um, because of uh, Leo Burnett and things like that. That I think there is an opportunity for us to skim some of that work up to us if we get a sound stage and if we get um you know the the right incentive package and crewing packages and things like that it's all about packaging for a producer they want to make a call and say hey do you, what kind of locals can i get and i'm going to bring in my keys um but can you provide these keys and give me a tax break for them. So, I mean, producers are all about money and directors are all about the vision and the workers are all about the creative and getting it done. And the incentives help bring work to local economies and, um, you know, help make things great for give um, students um, and workers that have been slaving away on industrials and things like that. Um, a chance to move up and, um, you know, get on much bigger shows. So what I'm learning here is it seems like uh, tax incentives for, for filmmakers are, is, is a very good thing. But Melissa, I believe you had commented before that it hasn't necessarily worked everywhere. Wisconsin being an example from what I remember, we had tax incentives, uh, sorry, tax incentives for a, a period of time. What happened there? Could you please walk us through sure. um, how we got it and how we lost them? So um, Wisconsin was a, a unique model. Um, so Wisconsin had a film office that um, was not particularly effective. And there was a group of people who wanted to bring more production work to Wisconsin. And we all kind of figured out that the only way for that to happen was to have an incentives package. Um, so we worked with um, producer uh, Scott Robbie, who was uh, originally from um, the greater Milwaukee area, Heartland, Hartford, one of those two, and um, has, a fair amount of knowledge about incentives and, and he uh, kind of drafted the first round. Uh, we started a, a group to kind of say, okay, what do we need to do if this is gonna happen? I mean, that was a, the, the until they got past kind of thing took a very long time. Um, I think I worked as a volunteer on that project probably for three years 
um, before we were able to get the incentives passed. Um, and so it was written into the budget in, boy, we announced it at Sundance, I want to say January of 2008. So we knew they were going to come together in um, fall of 2007, which is when I joined Film, Film Wisconsin full time as the associate director. Um, and then um, they announced it at Sundance uh, in 2000. Eight and then immediately uh, speaking to bringing in uh, have being able to bounce off of Illinois, they were at that point scouting for public enemies, and um, they came up to scout one location and then ended up shooting about 60 65 percent of the movie uh, in Wisconsin, um, and that was because of our incentives. Now. The challenge with that was we kind of weren't ready. Um, we didn't have a ton of union crew. We have great crews here. Uh, I mean, they're just great. And at, but at the time, almost none of them were union. So all of the IA crew, they were all stage crew um, and not necessarily ready to, to be on a movie set. Um, and also, Public Enemies was huge. It was a huge film. And so that was actually, I think, part of the downfall is because the incentive that was paid out as a result of that film, and yes, it was a huge spend, <laughs> but um, as a result, uh, it was a huge outlay. And then you had the perfect storm because they shot a whole lot in um, the Dells area. And that was the same year that Lake Delton, the dam broke, right? And so you couldn't see the spike in the spend, in the hotel spent. But public enemies spent a ton of money there. And I personally think in having looked at the books probably saved the area because there were hotels that would have completely gone under if it wasn't for the spend that public enemies made in that community. But you didn't see the spike, you just saw it kind of flat, you saw it level. And if so, if Lake Delton hadn't melted, right, you would have seen a spike in spend. If public enemies hadn't come and the Lake Delton thing happened, you would have seen this huge dip, but instead you just kind of saw this flat line. And so when they were, when the actuaries were looking at it, they're like, well, this isn't worth the money. And so they basically killed the incentives within two years of them passing. So by February of 2009, uh, they had been written out of the budget and they were gone. I'll, I'll jump in real quick. There was two events that you hosted in Los Angeles that were fantastic. That, um, um, you know, I, I, I met Kato Kalen and um, and uh, you know, so many people from Wisconsin there, and they, it was on the day that the Packer game was there, and there was cheese and things like that. And I went to University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, which is a, a big film school, and um, you know, I have I have friends that have um, gone on to produce Wipeout, and um, uh, people that have gone to CNN and been lifers and things like that, and everybody would always in their heart really want to bring something back to Wisconsin and those events really brought everybody together and thought what can we do can we do something you know and um, so one of the films that I worked on was a Kenosha to Rhinelander trip um, and uh, you know there were no incentives and it was uh, Meg's and, and Jules uh, adventure um, and then I've also worked on I Dream of Cycle Pump, which is another Kenosha film. You know, just in the last, um, you know, two years or two, three years that I've been back here. So there is a great film community. I think it just needs to be fueled. And then the other thing that I think would be great is to give a little boost to the film schools um, like Oshkosh. Uh, University of Milwaukee has a great film program. Madison, I, I you know, I 
I think they could use a little bit of a boost, but maybe that's a way that the, um, that the state can get involved on the educational level to um, you know, get more filmmakers um, educated. Um, you know, they can go down to Chicago, get the hours to get into the union and, and things like that. And just that's, that's part of the thing. So what I really think that Wisconsin needs is an area of sound stages, whether it be converted warehouses that you know, may have been sort of an abandoned Amazon project or something like that, or uh, old, uh, you know, let's say shop goes Kmart or something like that. All of those types of things are ripe for a reinvigoration of a community of Milwaukee, Madison, uh, Green Bay. It's gonna take a, a big city like that. But then you um, educate the crews, um, give training programs, incentives and things like that to technical schools, the universities. And I think it's a great opportunity for Wisconsin to do really, really great things. And um, uh, right now stage space in California is um, very non-existent. You can't book, you know, get stages uh, there. Georgia is, is full because of their incentives and things like that. So it's gonna take a, um, a bit of a corporate and um, government um, partnership along with the filmmakers to make a, a, a filmmaking center, you know, where, wherever that be, a Milwaukee, Madison, you know, type thing that brings everybody together, but you really need to have something inside. So to that point, and, and it's really a shame that the incentives got nixed when they did because the momentum had just begun. So at the time, MATC started a program that um, they had a state-of-the-art motion capture uh, stage that they put in that nobody else had done. The, the only person that had it was uh, USC and James Cameron had paid for it, right? So MATC made that investment, um, literally announced it like three weeks before the incentives got killed. Um, there, were, there were efforts being made across the board um, and then the efforts, it just got destroyed. I mean, so I think the public part, private partnership model can work and it may be the only way that it works in Wisconsin. I mean, we still do not have an arts board. Our arts board is underneath the Department of Tourism. Um, and so I don't know how you build an arts center like this in that way. Although I guess you can argue that incentives belong under the Department of Tourism as much as any department, uh, simply because it does create a tourism draw in the long, in the long run. So um, yeah, it was, a, it was a real shame that the, the timing happened the way it did because across the board, absolutely. When I would go out to LA for the um, location conventions, everybody that had come from Wisconsin was like, oh, I'm so excited that, you know, you guys have incentives and I'm going to be able to go home and shoot. I mean, you know, everybody was stoked about it. And then it just fell apart. It was awful. How, it was how can we reinvigorate it? I guess that's the topic of the discussion. Yeah. If I, if I could say something, it, there, there seemed to be a misconception, if I remember correctly, Melissa, because you were around then, about how what we gave public enemies at the time i don't think that people realize how much mighty actually dumped into this community i was in a hotel room with the i think the art director of public enemies and we were you know having some beers and talking and he was and he pointed in the wind through the window down at the milwaukee county uh, historical society how they pretty much like gave them a ton of money to refurbish and restore that building. And, you know, that money wasn't going to come from the state. Public enemies paid for that. Right. And, you know, there's other stories of, you know, costume designers and crew members hunting antique stores and buying up all the old shoes and then sending them to a shoemaker, to a cobbler to fix them for the, so everyone can have period shoes on the set. You don't, we don't hear stories like that. We just hear, 
what stories about like, well, we gave them a ton of money. What did we see? You know? Right. And that's what I'm saying where when you looked at the overall picture of the economic impact, there was this unfortunate timing of, mm-hmm. of like Delta and draining, right? So it was kind of, it kind of was like flatline, but it wasn't, right? Because mm-hmm. the dreadful economic impact of Lake, Del- Lake Delta draining was completely offset by the spend that public en- enemies made, right? Yeah. So public enemies spent, I, I don't know, several hundred million dollars in the state. I mean, it was it was a huge number. And I don't recall exactly what the number was. I'm not sure that we ever saw the number. Somebody had published an article that, and I believe it was actually in the journal, that had wrong numbers. I mean, I, I remember we were fighting that battle for like two months. Like, no, those are not the numbers. Here are the numbers. Like, you know, um, it was... There was a whole misinformation campaign, and I honestly don't know where that came from. I, I don't know if that was somebody within the state wanted to torpedo yeah. the project, and so they put that out there so that there would, you know, we would lose public support. I honestly don't know um, where that fallacy came from. Yeah, there John, are- John, what do you, uh, John, what do you see as the trends right now? Where are people shooting, and what could we? What could be subsidized? I'm sorry to uh, stop. Uh, stop. Uh, I would. Well, I, I have so many ideas. I didn't want to interrupt, but I wanted to just touch quick on the um, Melissa mentioned two years. Um, Wisconsin has a biannual budget, so anytime Wisconsin makes a plan, it's for that like 700 and whatever days at a time. Um, so sometimes, if there's like a great like, hey, everybody, let's do tax incentives. Well. If it's six weeks after we wrote the and approved the last budget, like it's going to be a year and a half before we talk about it. Um, but at the same time, that two-year window is scary. So, like, I'm a business owner. I, I mean, I can imagine, like, oh, great. Like, there, if if you told me in ten minutes tax incentives are starting, like, I'd go to the bank and I'd get a bunch of money. But I'd be a lot more conservative now, knowing that in two years, like, the state might just be like, we're done. You're cut off again. Um, I've seen plenty of my business peers, you know, like RDI stages comes to mind as one where like they yeah. made a big capital investment. They made an outlay. They yeah. put in the studio, they put in the, the electrical and the lighting. They spent the money on training. They made this investment and then they're standing there, you know, cause it takes a year to do that. And it takes 10 years to pay off the mortgage and nobody keeps showing up after year one. So um, I think, I think it's, uh, it would mean a lot if whatever tax incentives came in place came with some sort of political support from the people who were proposing them, um, that meant longer than like, well, we're going to stick around for a year and see, because any impact is going to need to be longer than that. Right. Um, yeah. looking at our neighbors, I think it's really valuable. So like currently Michigan isn't doing any, or if they do, it's very small tax incentives, um, Illinois is overflowing and Minnesota is growing. And I think the Minnesota model is actually really um, useful for us because Minnesota was um, aware that too much too fast can be a bad thing. Can you, ex- uh, and, and, could you explain what, what uh, we don't have a whole lot of time. Could you explain what Minnesota is doing currently? Minnesota has a cap on what uh, the total number of incentives can be. So you've got to you know, contact the film office and then make an application and, and tell them what your project will be. And then they'll say, you can use it. Um, so then you still have to make the spend and then you get the credit. But the, the implication is you can't take an $80 million movie and drop it in Minneapolis and spend 75 million of it in Minneapolis and then get your 20%, 25% back because that's not going to do Minnesota any good. Like it's, it's too much. It's like doing drugs. You just go crazy. But like, if what we have is a few years where there's 50%, 100% growth in the baseline industry, then we can grow to support those larger productions. Um, the Chicago incentives right now, if you're doing a feature production, if, you know, I guess what you call a production an hour or longer, 
Um, you need to spend at least $100,000 to qualify. Um, hmm. But like they can, obviously you could spend 40 million and get credit on the whole thing. Um, we might be able to capitalize on smaller productions. We may be able to pull some commercial production that doesn't qualify under, under um, Illinois' model now. Um, every once in a while, I talk with filmmakers who are, you know, oh, I'd love, you know, they grow up in Wisconsin, they want to make movies here, but today you'd be a fool to shoot in Wisconsin because you're giving money away. I, if you're shooting a hundred thousand dollars super indie budget, um, and you're doing it in Kenosha, your money is worth twenty five percent more if you go ten miles south. Yeah. Um, and you can't like whether or not like you want to keep it as a point of pride doesn't even matter because ultimately you're accountable to investors, and you need to do the best for them. So you can't just leave that money there. So I think that that was one of our main mistakes the first time out, is that we didn't have a cap. Right. So we brought in the first movie we happened to get was this huge movie and there was no cap. And so it kind of freaked everybody out. We would have been much better served had half a dozen little movies come in or we had had a cap on what public enemy could have spent because they ended up loving the locations anyway. And they probably would have made the same spend. They just wouldn't have gotten quite as much back, you know. So I think that there needs to be a production by a production cap for it to be successful, especially uh, in the buildup phase. Michael, five minutes. Thank you. All right. So we don't have a whole lot of time, but I think we've touched on a lot. So I guess the biggest thing I, and I feel like we've already touched on it a little bit, but I, I want to hear kind of your final thoughts. Do you think Wisconsin can thrive as a filmmaking state without this? Without the incentives, I don't think it can thrive. I think that if we were to bring back reasonable incentives um, with, with limits, with caps, um, but also open to small filmmakers, I think that we could, I mean, and that's why I committed five years of my life to it, right? Like, I really think that Wisconsin has a lot going to it. We have phenomenal crews, phenomenal locations. We need a little bit more infrastructure, but it's a really, really great place to shoot a movie. Yeah. I think it definitely could use a soundstage just as a base. And if you look at like Atlanta, where Tyler Perry during COVID built it into an island, that was something that was unique. And there's maybe some places that we could do um, you know, a area that is a um, specific area, you know, be it a community that gets behind it, the state gets behind it. But the other thing is, is students are very important because, you know, they're the future of everything and they're the ones that are going to make future movies here. There's a lot of people that, um, I, you know, there was well over 250, 300 people in, from Oshkosh active in the LA film community. Uh, we'd have reunions and, th and things like that. And they, I would hire guys. If somebody came across and had Wisconsin on their resume, I'd always bring them in for an interview, just say, hey, what's your backstory? What's, you know, what's the whole thing when you're a hiring manager? So I think students are important, education of crews, training of crews, technical schools, and, but we'd need a, a production center. Um, be in an old warehouse or something that we can base something in and move from there. John? Yeah, my, my take is it's, we're withering on the vine. I think we are way behind our neighbors. I think we are, we've already missed out on a ton of opportunity. Um, it would be a huge difference. Even a small amount of tax incentives would make a huge difference for the industry here. I think it would make a huge difference for the brain drain. I mean, we can all talk about, oh, there are these celebrities that came from Wisconsin. Which ones of those live in Wisconsin? What film directors live here? Okay, awesome, right? But you, you spend half your life in a hotel in a city with a tax incentive attached. Yep. Like, <laughs> where do you spend well, your not, money? Not half. It was, you know, just a couple months here and there. But yeah, uh, but I, I was deployed, I'll say deployed, you know, two places specifically because they have tax incentives. And like my, my recent experience was a Netflix show that was in Connecticut and they brought me out because I had a skill, but most of the crew came from New York, but it was a whole East Coast 
tax incentive thing that it was inside the production area and that even though you're outside of New York, you can still get the incentives, get the New York crew. You can't even get crew in Boston, New York or Connecticut now because they're so busy and any soundstage in LA is booked to capacity for the next five years. So I, oh, I'm real sorry, estate Michael, people are have, building have, and building. We have one minute, Michael, if you want to wrap up. All right. So uh, I want to thank everyone for you know taking time out of your day to come talk about this topic that I think is very important to the filmmaking landscape in Wisconsin and something that I feel like anyone who wants to work in this field should care about. Uh, anyone who wants to stay here and work in this field should care about. Uh, and I appreciate everyone who is listening to this and um, take it to heart. And when this uh, when this topic comes up, be passionate about it and, you know, really put yourselves out there and, you know, fight to get this. So that way, because it'll be good for everyone. Anyone who says, hey, I want to work on movies. This is how you do it. You don't, you know, if, if like, like uh, Jeff kept saying, if they would put some money into the film schools and really help get us trained and help get us in the union, this could be good for a lot of people. And um, I think this has been a very enlightening conversation. And thank you all for taking some time out of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, guys.